glad to see them. All of you at home would like to welcome you, well, welcome you to the Ava General Baptist online service on this Palm Sunday. Uh, we're going to have uh, some music service first, then Tim's going to take up the preaching. And we're going to be singing out of the Heavenly Highway hymns this morning. But before we do that, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, then we'll start the music. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord, that we can come in your house or worship you at home or wherever you might be, Lord, on this service. Lord, we just know that uh, no matter where you're at, this is just a building, and the church is the body, the people. Lord, I just pray that you'd worship with us today, Lord. Lord, uh, help us to know that uh, you are in control of everything going on today. This pandemic and everything will pass, and you will still be King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, uh, we just thank you and love you today, and help us to be your service and help someone else through this week. Lord, we just thank you, and we love you, and we pray in your name. Amen. Okay, first song is going to be page uh, 115. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army. page 275 revive us again we praise thee O God for the son of thy love for Jesus who died and is now gone above Hallelujah and the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah and the glory. Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for the Spirit of Life who has shown us the Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah and the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, 
thine the glory, revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hey, for our last song, page 41, I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. To a home on God's celestial shore, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. This life have grown, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars that flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. Good morning, Ava General Baptist Church Online. It's great to be with you online. It's great to worship with you this morning, and I'm so excited for this being Palm Sunday, what we have to celebrate, and it's, um, it's a fantastic time to be a Christian. It's a, it's a fantastic time to have a God to believe in and God to go forth with us, and I'm so thankful as we looked at over these last few weeks that God does go before us, and he hasn't been surprised by anything, and so I want you to place your trust and your hope in him this morning if you haven't. Um, I hope you have been and uh, will continue to be encouraged and equipped today for the, by the word of God and with the singing that we've sang already and, and participated in. And, and then as we study God's word, that you will be encouraged and equipped by God's word this morning. Um, I did want to mention and to share with you all that if you know of anybody who may not have Facebook and maybe they are missing out on the services, we are recording the services on DVD. So, so if you know of somebody, have them contact the office or contact us at the office and let us know and we'll get them a DVD to, of the services. We actually have the DVD from the, sur uh, from the devotion this last Wednesday that Orn and I uh, participated in and shared with you on Facebook. So those are some of the things that we do have have available for those that aren't online. 
Also, we have um, the stay-at-home order that's starting tonight. And so um, what we're doing as far as a church is we're taking some extra precautions. Um, you notice up here on the stage, there's six foot of distance between every person. Um, and, and we'll also be looking at that in the office as well. And so if you drop off your offering this week at the office or your tithe at the office, we want to let you know that there will be a designated spot for that so we're not coming into contact within that six foot barrier of each other and so there will be a designated spot for that in the office Monday through Thursday 9 to 3 are the times for that if you would like to give online you can give at avageneral.com or you can mail in an offering if you would like to do that at P.O. Box 116 in Ava, Missouri. Um, updates, we have been sharing updates as many of you are seeing right now on our Facebook page, Ava General Baptist Church. We've also been sharing updates on our Facebook group, Ava General Baptist Church as well. And so many of you are a part of that group. If you're not, go look for that in the groups. That group setting is kind of a more intimate, private setting for our church only. And so any posts or any comments you make on that group, um, only the people in our church group can see that. So that's kind of what that's for. Uh, many others are receiving um, information by mail. I know this morning you received a gift, hopefully yesterday by mail, of a palm leaf. And so hold on to that because you're going to be needing that during the sermon this morning and, and as today is Palm Sunday and that's what we celebrate. Some of you have opted out for receiving things in, in the information in the mail and I did want to let you know that all the information we send out in the mail will be available either on our website and most of all on Facebook in the, in the group and, and on our Facebook page as well. Um, this last Wednesday, we, we've been sharing midweek devotions, and I hope those have been helping you out. Uh, this last Wednesday, we did a special one with Orrin and myself, and this next Wednesday, we'll have a, a unique devotion for you, too, coming up, and hopefully it helps you in this time. It helps you feed you spiritually, and that's our prayer, and that's our hope with that. We'll also have a Good Friday devotion this week. Um, it'll be mid-afternoon, and so be looking for that, and I'll, be, I'll go live with a video devotion on Good Friday, and we will celebrate Good Friday together online. Um, there will be no quarterly business meeting in April. Um, we will hold off on all of our business that we're, we're going to conduct in that April business meeting. We'll hold off until our July business meeting for that. So as you're as you're praying, I, I wanted to list a few prayer requests as I've been going throughout the week and I've been noticing some things within our community, within our world actually, that have been going on. And so um, kids and parents right now are really uh, trying to figure out how to do this homeschool thing, how to um, teach their children and teachers also Please be in prayer for our teachers, our educators, because they are trying their hardest to get curriculum, to get information out online, and, and some people don't have complete access to online just right at their fingertips, and so they're having to work around and find ways of getting that information, and so... I would ask that you would pray for our students, our, their parents, and, and the families, and also our educators and the administrators of our school system, as they have to make hard decisions, and they, it, this is a hard time for them as well. And it's impacting their daily lives as they work and as they teach our students. Also, um, continue to pray for our leaders, both our local and our national leaders, I would ask that you would please pray for them. Um, I, I appreciate your, your thoughts and your prayers as you have shared with me, and many people have said, I'm praying for you, Pastor, I'm praying for the deacons and the leadership in the church, and, and I appreciate that. But I would also ask you not to stop those prayers with our local church, with, our, with Ava General Baptist Church, but also churches all over our community. Um, be praying for the leaders of churches across Ava, Douglas County, and, and also around the, and around the world, because they're, they're having to think of uh, some different ways of doing things, and, and I, I appreciate your support, and it's been so, so encouraging to me. Also, please pray for the, those that are sick. We received some reports of some people who are um, within our church who have friends or family members that have been sick with the coronavirus. And so be praying for those individuals as they get, seek the medical help that they need. And also um, all the nurses and doctors that are working around the clock, they are putting in so much hard work and, uh, and we appreciate them so much. Um, also during this time, 
it's, it's Easter and we celebrate our risen Savior. And so I hope that people come to salvation through this time. I hope that as they look back over coronavirus, COVID-19, that they say that is a time that I clung to my Savior for the very first time. And that's what I pray for this morning. So if you would, please join me in prayer at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. I know there are stresses and there are fears all around us, and I pray that as we dig into your word this morning, Lord, that we would see that those stresses and those fears can subside when we come into your presence, God. When we, when we cling to you and we look to you for guidance, when we look to you for direction, God, that you would give that to us. Lord, we pray for um, individuals all around the world who are brothers and sisters who are worshiping you and serving you in various ways, God, that you would continue to be with them and to help them and to guide them and to lead them. God, we pray for families in our local community that are trying to educate their children and, and our, our teachers that are doing such a great job of getting that information out. I pray that you would be with them right now, that you would guide them, give them wisdom in their decisions, and as well as our administrators, our local leaders, and our national leaders. God, that they would make decisions that are good for everybody and that would honor you ultimately, Lord. God, we love you and we praise you this morning. We ask that you would open up our hearts and our minds to understand and to comprehend your word, God. We, we need it so much in our lives today for encouragement, for direction, and for guidance in everything that we say and do. And we thank you, Lord, for loving us, us enough to speak to us, to come to us, God. As we celebrate Palm Sunday, we thank you so much for coming into that city and, and for the celebration that happened. And God, we are still celebrating that today. We love you, Lord, and we praise you this morning. And it's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. It's great to, it's great to be with you online as you... As you may have received your palm leaf, I want you to hold it up and, and hold it in your hands through the sermon. And uh, if you didn't receive one, go ahead and rip off a piece of paper and let that be your palm leaf during this sermon. But you're going to need it as we walk through this sermon as we looked at our reaction matters. That's what we're looking at this morning. Our reaction matters. All around us, we see people who are reacting in various ways. And some of it's causing hardship on other people in that they are buying up stuff that they may not need or, or reacting in ways that are causing fear among, among other people around them. And so we see that our reaction matters because how we act, what we say, what we do, not only impacts us, but it impacts those around us. And so this morning, as we look at our reaction matters, we'll look at Palm Sunday and, and when Jesus comes in to the city and the celebration that happens. And the Palm Sunday is a great reminder of the praise that our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords deserves each and every day, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the, the prophecy in Zechariah happened around 500 years before Jesus came. And the prophecy says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so the king is coming, and that's what the people were celebrating that day. And found in Mark chapter 11 is where we'll read this morning about the fulfillment of that prophecy. The king was coming in as kings came in before, riding into town, but usually they were on more of a stallion, a war horse type thing, uh, showing victory over, over the enemies. But Jesus came in riding on a donkey. Wasn't quite what they expected, but nonetheless, that was their king and they were celebrating him. So they were praising him as a king deserves praise and they were laying down palm branches as we'll see and they were laying down their coats at that time even though he humbly came in on a donkey just as he humbly came into this world very quietly but very impactfully for our, for our world for eternity. In Mark chapter 11 it says this, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street. And they untied it, and some of those who were 
standing there, said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And I can only imagine someone coming up and trying to steal something out of my yard and saying, What are you doing untying it? And this was their response. They told them what Jesus had said. And then they said, Okay, and they let them go. I'll bring it back. And they brought the colt to Jesus. And they threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others sp- spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And John, he tells us, those were palm branches. And those who went before him, and those who followed him, were all around him. They were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And that was the commotion that was going on that day. In Matthew, it says the whole city was stirred up. And people were asking, who is this? There's people all around him shouting, victory, Hosanna. And who is this? And then people would answer them back. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. And they were excited and they were proclaiming the king that had come. Well, that word Hosanna comes directly from Psalm 118 verse 25. That Hebrew word for Hosanna is found in Psalm 118. And Hosanna is made up of two Hebrew words, Yasha and Anna. Yasha and Anna. And in Psalm chapter 118, verse 25, it says, Save us, we pray, O Lord. That word save us is Yasha. It means to be open, to be wide, to be free, to have victory. We just sang a song about the, like a bird set from prison is free. And that's the picture that goes on here with Yasha, is to gain victory. Many of you... Kind of like me at some time, stay at home has us like, Yasha, Yasha, God, please save us, save us. And that's what we feel a lot of the times. And, and as Jesus was coming in, that's what the people were shouting. They were shouting, God, save us, give us victory, O Lord. We need victory. And in verse 25, the second part of that verse in Psalm 118 says, O Lord, we pray, give us success. Yasha is victory, and Anna is to beg Or to plead. Hold your palm leaves in your hand. God, save us. God, give us victory. God, please, we pray, give us success in our lives. And that's my prayer for us this morning, that God would give us success, not only for our benefit and our good and our salvation, but the salvation of those around us. That God would give us success in this life, and that he would save us and give us victory over sin, over Satan, over hell, once and for all, so that we can share that with those people we encounter through the week. There's many, many people that are living in complete fear and utter shock right now. And as Christians, it's our time to stand up and say, there's a Savior who came in. There's a Savior who you can, um, who you can go to to receive that freedom, to receive that victory. And that's what they were shouting that day as he was coming in. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. That was a celebration that was taking place. But if you were watching a movie, this is where the music changes. This is where the shouts of Hosanna start to fade away quietly when you realize the reality of the Israelites at this time. They were looking for a king to rescue them politically. They were looking for someone to rescue them and to free them nationally from the Romans. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus came to save them spiritually. And so a week later, some of the very people shouting, Victory, victory, our king, were chanting and shouting, Crucify him, crucify him, get rid of him, he's not our king, he's not what we wanted. It's a tragic thing for us to see the Savior, but to fail to recognize him as Savior. They had palm branches they were laying down. And they were proclaiming, you are our king. They saw him personally that day as he entered the city. They saw the donkey that he was riding on. They saw his face. They saw his eyes. He didn't much look like a king, but they thought he was. But they failed to recognize him as savior as time went on. You know, there's many people that see God actively working in their lives. Maybe that describes you this morning. 
you've seen, as you look back over your life, you say, okay, God, I understand that you, I see moments that you are working and that you have worked in my life, and I thank you for that. There's many people that have seen God actively working in their lives, but somehow, somehow, the cares of this world choke out any progression of that relationship in their life. If that explains you this morning, I hope and pray that you would come back to the Savior. I hope and pray you would come back to God. COVID-19 has brought some hard times for people that are struggling with reconciling in their minds of knowing and trusting God, but then asking, God, if you're so powerful, if you're so good, why are you allowing this to happen to me? Why has my job been impacted? Why has my family's health been impacted? Why has our country been completely, um, the, the financial situation in our country has deteriorated immensely? It seems like everything's falling apart, God. Why are you doing that? And we're kind of like when Jesus with the Israelites, when he came in, he didn't match their idea of saving or their idea of a king. God often surprises us in what he does, doesn't he? He surprised us when he came into this world through the Virgin Mary. He surprised us when he rode into that city on a donkey. He surprises us when we live in our lives and he acts in ways that we don't quite understand. Jesus came in a way and he surprised them as well. He came in a way that they didn't expect and he acted in ways that they didn't want him to act. He ate with sinners. He ate with tax collectors. And the religious rulers and the religious teachers went absolutely nuts over this. That's not who you're supposed to be with. That's not who you're supposed to be hanging out with. That's not who you're supposed to be sharing a meal with. Don't you recognize who these people are, Jesus? And it drove them nuts. Jesus acted in ways that they didn't want. Like when he gave time to those who didn't deserve to have time given to them. Like the woman at the well. And he's speaking to her. And he's spending time with her. Explaining salvation to her. And the disciples come back and they're completely disgusted, not saying anything, but thinking in their minds. And Jesus knew what they were thinking. Why is he talking with her? What is he doing? Doesn't he know what kind of person she is? Don't spend time with her. But he did. Jesus came in a way that they didn't expect and he acted in ways that they didn't want. He didn't play the religious games or he didn't hold to their expectations of what it means to be holy and separate. And Jesus responded to this in Matthew chapter 11. It's recorded. Jesus says this. But to what shall I compare this generation? It's like, a, it's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out with their playmates. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, a song of mourning for you. And you didn't mourn like we wanted you to. For John came, Jesus said, neither eating nor drinking. And they say, he has a demon. The son of man, or Jesus, came eating and drinking, he said. And they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. You're not acting the way we want our king to act. Has God ever acted in a way that you didn't think? Maybe in a way that you didn't expect him to act in. Maybe even in a way that you didn't want him to act. Maybe he didn't bless you fast enough. Maybe he didn't give you what you wanted in the way or time frame that you wanted it. God often surprises us in what he does. But nonetheless, our reaction matters. Our reaction matters. In Luke chapter 22, we're going to be uh, studying this morning of a time that the reaction mattered and some of the reactions were not godly. In Luke chapter 22, verses 47 through 53 is where we'll be this morning. In the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, they're recording the same events, um, just with some different details. It's kind of like um, when you get a story from my wife or myself. Lindsay will have a bunch of details and a bunch of things, and you'll be very well informed. But if you come to me, I'll let you know what you know, what you need to know, and maybe some details are left out. 
But, and that's how the synoptic gospels are. So in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and even in John in this case, records this account in scripture. And so in Luke 22, we brought to a time when the disciples um, are gathered together and Jesus is going to be arrested. It's the time he's arrested right before he is crucified, and that week starts. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them, and later on we're told it's Peter, one of them struck the servant of the high priest, who in John was named Malchus, and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the officers of the temple and the elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Matthew records after Peter struck, and he struck the servant of the high priest in his ear, hit him on the right side. Jesus turns to them, and he asks them one question. He says, do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send, send me more than 12 legions of angels? One Roman legion was at full strength was about 6,000 soldiers. So Jesus said, don't you think my father would, wouldn't send at a moment 72,000 angels beside, my, beside me to care for me, to save me, to deliver me? Of course he could have. But Jesus said, this isn't the way, this is the way it's supposed to happen. I'm going to be handed over. And he told his disciples that over and over and over again. And Mark, Mark records that at the end of this encounter, the disciples all left him and fled from him. And so we come into this time that Jesus is encountered by the group, the mob that came to arrest him. They have swords and clubs and the disciples are stressed out and they're fearful And Jesus taught over and over and over again, my kingdom is like this, my kingdom is like this. And he taught the disciples and the people around him in parables. In most of those teachings, he surprised his listeners because when he taught, it was in stark contrast of what his kingdom was like according to what their kingdom was like and the world that they lived in. That's not how they act and that's not how they lived. And so that's why when all these men come, the disciples all at once say, do you want us to strike them with the sword? And Peter thought this was a no-brainer. Of course he does. Of course he does. Let's start. Let's go ahead. And Peter just reacted. Our reaction matters in times of fear and in times of stress. How we react as Christians, it matters to other people. So the question is that we look at this morning is how should you and I react in times of fear or in times of stress? The first thing we need to do is to ask God. We need to ask God, which is exactly what the disciples did. They were doing all the right things. They even had a solution for this. They didn't just ask God, Jesus, what do you want us to do? They said, do you want us to strike them? Like, we've got an idea. We've got swords here. We can take care of this. Do you want us to, want us to strike them, Lord? As you pick up your palm leaf this morning and hold it in your hand, I want you to think about this. If your reaction and my reaction, if our first reaction will be to ask God, then our last reaction will be to praise Him. Just like they were doing when He was coming into the city, saying, Hosanna, we praise You. Give us victory, God. We praise You. We praise You. We praise You. But if our first reaction isn't asking God what to do, then our last reaction will be pleading with him for forgiveness instead of praising him. It will be pleading to him for forgiveness, which is exactly what Peter had to do. God, please forgive me. Please forgive me today. And so the first thing we need to do when we're fearful and we're living in times of anxiousness is asking God, God, what do you want us to do? Do you want me to strike? Do you want me to wait? Do you want me to just put my sword back all together and not even strike at all? 
but we should be asking God, no matter what our thought process is, asking God, God, what do you want me to do in this moment? Because Jesus teaches them an important lesson here. He says, even when times and things seem like they're falling apart, which for many of us, that's what it seems like. God, things are falling apart around us. What do we do? But Jesus teaches them, guys, look, the mob is all around me, but I'm right here in the middle of it. So things may be seeming like they're falling apart. I know they have swords. I know they have clubs, but I want you to know I'm right here in the middle of it. I'm right here in the middle of this time, and I'm acting in this moment. I'm working. This time may not feel like a moment to you. This time may feel like an eternity to you. Not being able to go to the coffee shop, not be being able to go to the singings that usually happen, not being able to go to the bingo and the games that usually go on, not being able to go and visit people, not being able to go and just sit in a restaurant, not being able to go and do much of anything, it seems like, other than enjoying outside. It may feel like an eternity to you, but I promise you, this is just a moment in history. This is just a moment in history, and I do not want you to miss God working in this moment. Last week we talked about the Israelites passing over the Jordan River as they come into the promised lands. And when they passed over on dry ground when God parted the waters of the Jordan and Joshua was leading them, they picked up stones from the middle of the Jordan that were completely dried because there was no water in it because God stopped the water. And when they picked up these stones and they were commanded to take these stones and they put them on their shoulders and they carried them over and when they crossed to the other side, they were commanded to stack these stones up. And these stones were supposed to be stones of remembrance. And I told you last week that there's going to be stones of remembrance from COVID-19. There's going to be things that you remember that uh, you see, okay, God was working in that moment. And I saw God working in that moment. And I, God was actually working through me in that moment. And I hope people come out of this moment who were not saved, come out of this moment uh, proclaiming that Christ is their Savior. That they, are their, that they are following Him once and for all. And that they have asked Him to forgive them for their sins. I hope that's what, one of the things that comes out as a stone of remembrance. I know that God is working in this moment. I had a dad tell me this last week that he has seen his child turn around and his child's following God and not doing some of the things that he was doing before that was very disobedient toward God and others. And I thought, how awesome is that? That there's a praise, there's praises upon praises that are coming out of this moment and this moment seems so bad and so horrible for so many people. But I want you to understand, brother or sister, that God is working in this moment. He hasn't forgotten about us. He's not abandoned us. He's right here with us walking through this time as we are walking through this time. And so you and I are supposed to ask God, what does our reaction need to be, Lord? God, what does our reaction need to be? And then we need to wait for his response. I know you don't like that. I don't like that. Waiting for God's response. Peter didn't like that either. And so before he even responded, he, all he had to do was wait a few more seconds. But before Peter, uh, Jesus responded, Peter went ahead and he reacted. And he took off the ear. And I can just see one of these moments, Jesus saying, shaking his head, saying, Father, this is the group that you gave me? <laughs> like, Father, these are the men, after I die in a week, they're going to be carrying the good news of my salvation to everybody? Man, they've got a long way to go. Man, they've got a long way to go. But he goes up and he heals the guy's ear and then he addresses his disciples. In Proverbs chapter 18, Peter probably should have studied this. It says, if one, if a person gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. If a person gives an answer before he hears, it's his folly and shame. Husbands, let me ask you, have you ever finished your wife's sentence incorrectly? Grab your palm leaf, husbands, and say, God save us. God save us. Lindsay one time was out in the yard, and she said, I need to go to the house to get, and I was just going to help and finish her sentence, so I told her the vacuum. She gave me a look that told me it was not her vacuum. I said, your mop. 
It wasn't her mop that she was getting. Have you ever prayed for temporary deafness? That's why I was praying over Lindsay at that moment because she finished her sentence and she kind of raised her voice at me and those eyes got real big and she said, no, water, a glass of water is what I was getting. I said, oh, that was my next response. Have you ever finished someone's sentence incorrectly? You know, waiting for an answer can cover a multitude of sins and bruises in my case. And so if one gives an answer, the writer of Proverbs says, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. You see, when we wait, waiting calms our ungodly reaction. Waiting lowers our swords, and waiting keeps ears attached. You may be thinking this last week, God, I need you to save me. God, I need you to attach some ears that I've taken off this last week. God, I've struck some people, and I shouldn't have struck them. I should have waited on your response, God. In James chapter 1, verse 19, James says, Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. There's so much wisdom in that. There's so much wisdom in that. Because we see... James says in verse 20, For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Nothing glorifying comes from the anger of men. Nothing worthy of praise comes from when we're angry of what we do and how we react. And we see this with Peter. Now there's an ear laying on the floor. There's a guy wounded. And Jesus is looking and saying, I taught you better than this. I taught you over and over again that this is not how my kingdom acts. My kingdom is supposed to act something different. My, the citizens of my kingdom are supposed to act differently from the world. And out of our anger only comes a trail of destruction when we react before we get God's direction. So we ask God and we wait for God to act and to give us guidance in our lives during fearful or anxious times. You see, this last Wednesday we had a devotion. And this next Wednesday we'll have another special devotion uh, for you as well. But this last Wednesday, Orn shared out Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 and following. And it says, God is our strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in, time of tr- in times of trouble. And I just love that psalm. That You know what? God is very present. He just doesn't just put us out there and expect us to act on our own and says, good luck, hopefully you make it through it. No, God is with us, working with us and guiding us and directing us, and he's very present in our times of trouble. But as you go down to verse 10 of Psalm chapter 46, it says, be still and know that I am God. Stay at home goes to infect this evening at midnight. We get the opportunity to be still in our world. To not to travel as much. To not have to go about and do the things that we normally do that keep us so busy. And so over this next week, and over these next three weeks, I really want you to focus on being still and knowing that God is God. To wait for him. And not only to speak and speak and speak and ask and ask and ask, because we can do that so much, but rarely do we take a step back and say, you know what, God, I'm going to listen. I'm going to stop just speaking to you and telling you what I want you to do and telling you what kind of king I want you to be. I'm going to listen for the response, God. I'm going to be still and know that you are Lord, that you are here, that you are leading me. I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to wait on your direction. And in the meantime, what do we do while we're waiting? We go back to the two greatest commandments. To love God, and to love other people. When we're at the store, and we're completely stressed out, loving God, and loving other people. Of course, from a safe distance, but still, loving God, and loving other people. Your reaction and my reaction matters in fearful and scary times. Loving God and loving others is the reaction that shines bright in some of the very darkest moments in history. Imagine how that night would have been different when the mob came to Jesus to take him away. 
and if Peter would have kept his sword lowered. Imagine what would have happened when the disciples loved their enemies that were coming at them. It seems elementary teaching, very basic teaching of the golden rule to, teach, to treat other people as you want to be treated. But we all too often need our basic teaching as a reminder to love God and love other people. Orrin quoted C.S. Lewis from Mere Christianity this last week. And C.S. Lewis says, Really great moral teachers never do introduce new moralities. No, the real job of every good moral teacher is to keep on bringing us back time after time to the old simple principles which we are all so anxious not to see. Which we are so anxious not to see. God, give us victory. Help us see how we can love you and love other people this week. I pray that you think of a way. Who can you love this week? Maybe somebody that you haven't talked to in a while. You need to contact them. Maybe an ear that you lopped off this past week. And you need to say, please forgive me. I was wrong. How do you need to love someone else this next week in the midst of fear and anxiousness in our world? Our reaction matters. How are we to react in fearful times? Ask God how to live your life. Wait on his response. And then love him and love other people's. If that's our first response to ask God, then our last response will say, be saying, Praise you, Lord. Praise you, King. Thank you for giving me victory. Thank you for saving me, God. Our God is ready and willing to save. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus Christ, this day. Thank you for coming into that town on that day and the people praising you. God, and even though they changed their chant a week later, we are still changing that chant back to Hosanna, 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 the King of David. You reign, God, forever and ever. And I thank you so much, Lord, that you gave us victory. You, you gave us, uh, you defeated sin, Satan, and hell, God, once and for all. And we can look to you for guidance. God, you are a very present help in time of need. And we need your help this week, God. We need your help today. God, I pray for people who are depressed and lonely at this time. Lord, that you would comfort them in ways that they haven't been comforted before. God, that they would look to you for guidance for their lives. And you would, you would deliver them, God. Lord, I pray that if there is anyone listening this morning or throughout this week, that if they are not following you, Lord, that they would uh, submit to you and surrender their lives to you, Lord. They would, maybe it's someone coming back to you from being gone a very long time. And they come back as a child comes back to their parents saying, please forgive me. And you hug them this week. God, I thank you so much for forgiving us, for working in our lives. Lord, we pray that you would help us worship you in a way that shows other people who you truly are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. You have a great week and know that God is with you every step of the way. Thank you.